all this is dr mubeen sayed from drbeen.com welcome to one more show so this is a series of discussions about berberin credit to, credit goes to dr paul marek who made me aware of this i wanted to make sure that we can look at various mechanisms that is what we do over here most of the time and so today is the mechanism of berberin for how does it increases the secretion of insulin and the more important thing that why does it not cause more insulin secretion when the glucose levels are low this is a very important thing because there are some drugs that would continue to cause insulin secretion even when the glucose levels are low causing dangerous hypoglycemia berberin in this paper that i would show you is shown not to cause insulin release when glucose levels are low so it is kind of safe on the hypo dangerous hypoglycemic side so let's start this i'm going to do a few more discussions for overall mechanisms today is just this one mechanism of how does berberin act on pancreatic beta cells and as usual i always discuss with the studies so the study that i'm going to be discussing is this one glucose lowering effect of berberin on type 2 disease a systemic review and meta analysis and in this paper they have discussed if you see here insulin secretory agents are commonly used to treat type 2 diabetes however traditional insulin secretory agents such as sulfonylureas and glenides have side effects of hypoglycemia in recent years researchers have discovered that berberin can inhibit the voltage gated potassium channels of pancreatic beta cell membrane and i would be explaining these things today and promote insulin secretion without causing hypoglycemia because the glucose lowering effects of berberin are only under hyperglycemic condition or in a high glucose dependent manner so this is the paper uh first of all this is drbean.com if you want to have more beautiful awesome lectures go to drbean.com in the description of this video there is a link to a very um inexpensive uh access to drbean.com and this access is going away we are still slipping on our tech but they are testing now i can at least see our courses page being tested so soon this lifetime type pricing will go away so if you want to be grandfathered in it you can take advantage of that so once again this is a paper and then here is another paper as well the links are in the description so let's start so these are gifts for humanity and they are continuing today i drew a new gifts for humanity artwork i hope you like it and now we're going to continue so quickly berberin is actually used in china or chinese medicine for thousands of years it is found in many plants many of those in their roots as well and um without going into which herbs it is found in just let's look at quickly a summary of the possible potential benefits of berberin and again there is a standard disclaimer that this is for educational purpose it is not a medical advice whatever changes you would like to do you talk with your doctor and then you both you and your doctor figure out what is the right thing to do and you go from there it is over the counter so metabolic health it improves insulin sensitivity and that is by increasing the number of receptors present on cells for insulin plus by reducing the fatty acid synthesis it increases the insulin release when needed and that is the only one point that i'm going to be discussing cardiovascular health it lowers cholesterol and triglycerides very important which then is helpful for heart health and the blood vessel health reduces blood pressure improves cardiac functions gut health it is anti inflammatory and antimicrobial because of that certain irritable bowel diseases can benefit from berberine inflammation it is immune modulator and actually i was discussing this with dr paul marek yesterday as well when the 
one of the issues in diabetes is that immune cells are not getting sufficient and correct energy. And because of that, they malfunction. And because of that, our immune system does not work correctly and we get infections and a potential risk of uh, cancers can increase. Berberin, by improving the situation with the uh, glucose and improving the insulin sensitivity, improving the insulin receptors, improving the GLUT receptors, which are the receptors for the glucose, overall that would improve the immune cells functions as well. And then once the immune cell is modulating and working correctly, then it would do its function better as well. Weight mo management, berberine reduces appetite as well. It is said that it can reduce appetite and because of that, the weight loss occurs as well. But that's not a very profound effect. Cancer, it has potential to treat some cancers. Mental health, it is anti-anxiety and antidepressant as well. Antimicrobial as well. So that is for various infections. It improves liver health. I feel this is the most important thing. Liver health or unhealthy liver results in metabolic syndromes, just like unhealthy kidneys do that. And talking about kidneys, please make sure I'm not going to cover here the side effects of the berberine and the drug interactions of the berberine. Make sure that you can just Google them. I would cover them a little later, but of course, I'm assuming that if you would make any change, you'll talk with your doctor, they would look up the interactions. So make sure you have seen the interactions. There are interactions. Liver health, it improves the liver health, which would in turn improve the glucose levels, improve the liver's function, which also improves the inflammatory proteins and all other metabolic systems. Liver has a very important role in them. So it is, I would just want to keep saying it, it is almost curative for liver, but of course not for everything. It is just very powerful on, it has a very powerfully positive impact on hepatocytes, liver cells. Skin health, because berberine is anti-inflammatory plus antimicrobial, it has an effect in, on acne and eczema. Eye health, it potentially improves or reduces the age-related related macular degeneration. It kind of stalls that progress. And then neurological health, it is uh, seen to be neuroprotective and can be useful for Parkinson's and Alzheimer's. So these are some of the effects. I am going to go into one of them. And this is a part where even we in medical schools, even doctors when practicing, sometimes have a hard time to understand how the insulin secretions occur and what is the role of potassium channels. So I am daring to put that out to everyone. And the reason for doing that is that I trust that we can actually understand it and then use it for a benefit for ourselves. So this is type 2 diabetes mellitus. I'm going to first show you the normal function of the beta cells and then show you that when berberine works on them, what do they do? So here is a pancreatic beta cell. The beta cell's role is to produce insulin as a in response to glucose levels. You can call a beta cell as a tiny microscopic glucometer, but not only just a glucometer that can see what is the level of glucose, it can then respond to it and make insulin to keep the glucose level at a certain level. So in this diagram, the first concept my request today from you is that look at one concept at a time and capture that before we go to the next one. First concept, here is glucose. This is a beta cell. Our cells, so now I'm going beyond the beta cells, our cells in general are negative. They're like, their membranes are negative. They're the negative cells. <laughs> the reason for this is that you see this little big monster <laughs> sitting inside the cell. Our cells have proteins in them. 
proteins are enzymes, proteins are the machinery of the cell. So there are lots of proteins. And those proteins predominantly have negative charges on them. Because of that, the cells are generally negatively charged on the inside. Not all of them, but majority of them. This is something that even uh, medical students and early uh, doctors struggle with that why is a cell negative inside? So the proteins, and why is this protein crying? Because it is a big blob. It is trapped in this cell. It's jailed in it. It cannot go out of it. So because of those proteins that are always going to be inside the cell, they give the cell a standard resting negative charge. This is called resting potential of minus. So I hope that this is the first concept that is clear. And this is true for neurons. This is true for muscle cells. This is true for other uh, hormonal, hormone producing cells, secretion, uh, secreting cells, and for the beta cells. Negative inside. Why is it negative inside? More proteins inside. Okay, so now next concept. A cell which at rest is negative, at rest means it is not functioning, it is just sitting around. And because of those proteins, as I said before, it is negative. I've removed the protein from here because I wanted to do other things and that would have created noise. Now, a cell, when it has to function, we call it, it becomes depolarized. The reason for it to be depolarized is that when a cell is in its resting state, it is negative inside and relatively then there is positive outside. And we say there is polarity of the cell. The cell has one pole negative inside and positive outside of the cell membrane. Depolarization means the poles will disappear. So how will the poles disappear? How will this electrical charge difference disappear? Well, either you make all of the outside negative, and so there is negative outside, negative inside, you have no polarity anymore. Or there is, you bring in positive inside, so there is positive in and positive I out, no polarity anymore, neutral cell. This is the same thing that happens in the heart as well. So, when a cell has to function, it's a standard part of our biology. When a cell has to function, it can become depolarized and depolarized cell allows certain functions to happen. So in the case of beta cell, we would like to trap some positive ions inside, which will then cause the insulin to be released. But I don't want to go there for a second. I want to discuss something else. In this beta cell, let's see what are these weird things I've made, like double tea kettle. <laughs> so on the top of this beta cell, and this is just for illustration, these channels are everywhere. The, on this beta cell, there are glucose transporters. These glucose transporters are always open to glucose. They are not gated channels and they do not need insulin to open them. For the other cells, majority of the cases, there are still other cells where glucose are not gated or they are, the gates are operated by other things than insulin. So leaving that, in the beta cell, the glucose channel that allow the glucose to come in are always open. Why? Because the beta cells are glucometers. They have to understand what is the glucose level. Because of that, they are always open to glucose. So this part is the glucose transporter. Then, this part is a channel, I've kind of exaggerated it like a long kettle um, spout, but these channels are little microscopic channels in the cell membranes. This is a channel called potassium ATP channel. That means this channel is for potassium ion and it is operated by ATP. And I'll explain what will happen. But just keep in mind that this is a potassium channel and potassium is a positive ion. This is another on the left side here. This is another potassium channel. This is called A, K for potassium, C, C for channel, KCNH6. There are actually many 
potassium voltage gated potassium channels on these beta cells i'm just looking at two of them kcnh6 this channel also allows potassium to go out so these little puffs that i have made here these are the puffs of potassium getting out inside the beta cell are these little bags <laughs> bags of insulin so these are the vesicles of insulin insulin molecules or actually not insulin they, these are pre pro insulin these molecules are stored in the cells in the vesicles tiny bags here is a door through which insulin can be released from the cell when needed generally when glucose levels are high more glucose pours in the beta cell more insulin comes out this over here is a window another channel called voltage gated calcium channel and here is a little calcium standing outside good so glucose channel one potassium channel other potassium channel insulin exit uh, possibilities and calcium channel good now in a resting state th this is the important part in the resting state the cell is negative inside because of proteins however the cell continues to get potassium to enter the cell now think about it cell is negative inside when the positives will arrive then they would reduce the negativity and if the positives are sufficiently uh, moved in in enough quantity then this cell will become zero or depolarized and it would start releasing insulin so we don't want that we don't want our cells to just willy-nilly all the time just continue to release insulin so what happens is this potassium that continues to come in and tries tries to make the cell positive it comes in and says hey lo, you dear protein don't be so negative i'm here i'm a positive thing for you <laughs> i how was that drama so anyways potassium comes in we keep these other potassium channels open all the time so that potassium can keep exiting as well so that we can maintain a resting negative level so that we, our beta cells just do not keep producing insulin just without any good reason good so here is another thing to keep in mind now that means if we close these channels then potassium will come in and not go out and the cell will start becoming positive and when the cell would start becoming positive sufficiently it will become positive then the cell will start releasing insulin so let's see what happens so once again resting cell now imagine this is a cell where there is glucose so you have just eaten food you have bunch of glucose available unfortunately in diabetics even without eating food at fasting time the liver might start doing gluconeogenesis and produce internal glucose called de novo synthesis of glucose but let's leave that all out just for the time being here is glucose you have eaten food there is high levels of glucose when they are present glucose will come into the cell beta cell and it has to go in the other cells too for other cells they would need insulin here we do not need insulin now when the glucose comes into the cell it will go and start the uh, glycolysis or the process of breaking down the glucose the krebs cycle and or the cori cycle right or just say just know that the metabolic pathway would be triggered that will break down this glucose and make it now before i continue here with the cell think about it when we have more glucose what do we want more insulin or less insulin of course we want more insulin so what happens when the glucose comes in it makes atp this a potassium atp channel comes closed because of the presence of a higher atp amount so atp to amp ratio increases and this channel closes so what happened glucose came in you ate food there was more glucose 
Now, I also know that not every food makes a lot of glucose. Carbs will, will make more. So, again, I don't have... We're not going to deal with all of those things in this one lecture. I want to stay focused on the pancreatic cell because this is a difficult concept, which I think is super easy to see it this way. So more glucose, more ATP. More ATP causes this ATP channel to become closed instead of opened. It was already open. When this channel becomes closed and the potassium that was coming in, now that potassium isn't going out. See that puff is not here anymore. Very tiny amount is going out of this channel, but the main channel that was allowing the potassium to go out is closed. What will happen is potassium would start accumulating inside the cell. When the potassium, so if you see here in this diagram, I wanted to make it into an animation, but I, I don't have time. So anyways, lots of potassium are now trapped inside. They convert or they balance out the negative charge and now the cell becomes depolarized. So I try to make the cell a little fat. What I meant was more glucose and more potassium and the cell is kind of puffing up and saying, all right, I got a lot of positives. I'm going to become neutral or depolarized. When it becomes depolarized, then what happens is these calcium channels open up. More glucose, potassium channel closes, more potassium, cell becomes depolarized, then the calcium channels open because they are voltage-gated channels, they only open at neutral voltage or positive voltage. So once they open up, calcium rush, rushes in. Now calcium is a very interesting thing, it takes part in the inflammation and causes the um, uh, causes the calcification of the inflamed areas. If there is repeated inflammation and we cannot form scar tissue, then it can build there. However, calcium generally is useful when a cell wants to do secretions or wants to do action. So calcium is used in neurons for their activity, muscles for their activity, hormones, the cells for their activity. So here, when the calcium enters the cell, do you know what it does? It's so funny. Just like my cat, Kyrie, you can see her tail <laughs> like a shark fin. When the calcium comes in, it picks up these uh, bags, the vesicles of insulin. Just Kyrie wants to sit in my lap. All right, so now she's in my lap. Okay. The vesicles of insulin under the presence of calcium are then dragged to the cell membrane and then they're opened on the cell membrane surface and the insulin is released. So in general, more glucose will cause more release of insulin. But what is the mechanism that happened? Glucose went into the cell, it caused the production of more ATP. The ATP caused the potassium ATP channel to close. That caused the potassiums not to go out anymore and they got trapped in the cell. The cell became depolarized. When the cell was depolarized, calcium channels opened up. Calcium came into the cell. It dragged or it helped, it activated those proteins that dragged the insulin vesicle to the cell surface and the insulin or pre-pro-insulin is released. Good, but did you notice that this channel is still open? The KC NH6, although it's not a very big channel, some potassium is still going out. Imagine if we close this channel as well, then the potassium would stay trapped for a longer period of time and the cell would continue to release insulin for a longer period of time. That is what berberine does. So, here is our little berberine flying, running around in the blood. It comes in when it is present, it closes this channel. When that channel is closed as well, then the potassiums that are inside would be more inside and they would stay longer inside. The cell would stay depolarized more longer and that would cause insulin to be released for a longer period of time. This is how berberin works during the hyperglycemic state or more glucose state or abundant glucose state and helps prolong the release of insulin, which is needed. Now, if you ask me this question that, hey, 
how about low glucose and why will berberine not cause an effect? So I'm going to go back up to this diagram. Now remember there are two channels open at resting state. This channel is a bigger one, more prominent one, more functional one. Let's say there is less glucose. When there is less glucose, then this channel will not close. That means potassium is just rushing out of this one. Then when you administer berberine, berberine can come and close this channel. But this is a minor channel. This bigger channel is still continuing to let potassium get out. That means cell will not depolarize. That means in the lower glucose state, even if the berberine is given, it will not depolarize the cell and the insulin will not come out, which is the right thing to do. But if you close this one, which happens only in the high glucose level, then you give the berberine, it would close this as well and insulin, voila, for a longer period of time. Beautiful mechanism. I hope this makes sense. Uh, this is one of the tough concepts and I think uh, it may have become clear. If not, please uh, let me know and I would do another talk. But this is how berberine works for just one concept. It has so many actions, but we only wanted to talk about today how it works on insulin. In the coming days, I would explain how berberine acts on the liver. How does it reduce the fatty acid synthesis? How does it reduce the cholesterol production? And how is it helpful for other things as well? So this is the discussion. Um, Please like, subscribe, and share. John Snyder has a very good comment. Extraction of bourbon is well documented and very reputable brands will work. So there are actually good brands for that as well. Um, in the US, bourbon is a supplement, yes. And it is over the counter. So Skyfrox says, what dose are we talking? I think, uh, so bourbon gets... Uh, destroyed a lot in the GIT before even absorption. And secondly, liver uh, metabolizes it a lot as well. So 500 mg morning and evening is a very standard dose, but it can be three times as well. Because it is destroyed very quickly, its bioavailability is generally low. So more frequent doses are needed. So my suggestion will be to use once or twice a day and then from there, slowly with the side effects, which can be GIT related. And as you become more adjusted to it, then you can increase it. And of course, with your doctor's uh, advice. So thank you very much. Please like, subscribe and share. If you would like to support this work, there are, description, there are links in the description. You can buy me a coffee or you can become a patron or a Substack member or even this YouTube channel member. Uh, Colombian says, can you also talk about the antiarrhythmic properties? Absolutely. So I would do, I will take care. So I'm going to do a series of berberine lectures talking about this mechanism, but I want to do one mechanism at one time. So that can become a crystal clear concept without overwhelming with the lots other concepts. Jean, thank you very much. John says berberine is used for cholesterol, diabetes as an antibiotic, anti calor Yes, and it lowers blood pressure. That is correct. I wrote those in the beginning. M. Gregory says I have to rewatch it. Les says thank you. You're very welcome. Um, it is Ayurvedic as well. It is Chinese as well. And John says thank you very much. Very Thank you very much. Once again, please like, subscribe and share. That is the easiest and the best thing you can do. Then there are links in the description for other support if you would like to do it. I would see you again with more berberine. Bye-bye for now.